Hey everyone, Jeff Nelson here. Today, let's discuss omega-3 fats and DHA supplements. In 2019, I created a series of videos on the essential fatty acid DHA and its relation to dementia. In November of 2019 and February of 2020, Dr. Michael Clapper also produced two videos on this topic in which he recommended avoiding both DHA supplements and the blood test used to check omega-3 levels. These videos can still be viewed on my YouTube channel. Recently, I discovered that Dr. Clapper has released a new video called Interesting DHA Update March 2023, in which he now recommends the complete opposite of what he said in his previous videos. As he is a man of science, I was curious to see what new evidence he would be presenting, and that's the focus of our discussion today. Despite the title of Dr. Clapper's new video, it turns out that no new scientific studies are mentioned in the entire 22 plus minutes of his presentation. Now I, on the other hand, will be telling you about an extremely important study on DHA supplements that was published in late 2020. This newer study tells us precisely how much DHA you would need to consume in a supplement for it to actually reach your brain. Using spinal taps, researchers found the answer. And as I'm gonna explain, you may be surprised to find out that if you follow Dr. Clapper's advice or take Dr. Furman's DHA supplement, that the amount of DHA that will reach your brain is likely to be zero. All right, more about that study in a moment, but in his new video, Dr. Clapper cites only two scientific articles, a 2016 study called the Cora Age Study, and a 2006 study which Dr. Clapper expresses doubts about. Previously, Dr. Clapper acknowledged that he was not acting on solid science when he first advised people to take DHA supplements. It turns out the two major premises that I have been acting on, one, that low DHA levels in vegans predispose them to dementia, and two, taking DHA supplementation will prevent dementia, there really are no solid scientific studies supporting those two premises. So, which new studies now support Dr. Clapper's decision to resume testing and resume supplementation? I assume that he changed his mind based on the 2016 Cora Age study that he discusses in his video because he does not mention any other evidence uh, supporting his new recommendations. As far as the anti-supplementation camp goes. If you've watched it, you know Dr. Clapper begins his video by addressing arguments against DHA supplementation, such as the body of research suggesting potential increased risk of prostate cancer in men with higher DHA levels. Previously, Dr. Clapper expressed some concern about a potential increased prostate cancer risk. His own uncle had died from it. And there has been published research by reputable investigators connecting high levels of DHA with prostate cancer. And my uncle Al died a gruesome death from prostate cancer that had spread to his bones. And taking these algae oil capsules made me think of my uncle Al most every day. However, today Dr. Clapper dismisses a possible increased prostate cancer risk. Aggressive prostate cancer, though I've not seen that study come up again in the literature, the urologists don't seem to be very concerned about that. So Dr. Clapper dismisses this concern by stating that urologists do not seem particularly worried about it. What's a little puzzling is that while he defers to urologist expertise in this matter, since urologists are prostate cancer specialists, Dr. Clapper appears not to trust dementia specialists. As I showed in one of my previous DHA videos, multiple international guidelines on dementia prevention, including one from the World Health Organization, do not list DHA deficiency or veganism as possible risk factors for dementia. In fact, the WHO guidelines explicitly state that DHA should not be taken for dementia prevention. For unclear reasons, Dr. Clapper does not accept the opinions of leading dementia specialists from across the world who've devoted their careers to the subject and have conducted exhaustive searches of the scientific literature to come up with a consensus on the risk factors for dementia and how to prevent it. 
A massive meta-analysis and systematic review on dementia prevention was published in September of 2020. Almost 45,000 studies were identified, 243 observational perspective studies, 153 randomized controlled trials included, from which 104 modifiable factors and 11 interventions were included. Amazingly, there is not a single word in this review about DHA deficiency or following a vegan diet being a risk factor for dementia. They also found that DHA supplementation was not helpful. Specifically, moderate to high credibility of results showed little benefit on the risk of Alzheimer's disease from DHA and EPA supplementation. It seems Dr. Clapper may be selectively endorsing research that supports his views while disregarding opposing evidence, even though that evidence is overwhelming. Dr. Clapper goes on to describe the millions of vegans worldwide as participating in a huge experiment by being vegan. The millions of vegans now live on the planet are doing this huge experiment. We really don't know. So this statement implies concerns about the safety and long-term effects of a vegan diet due to the lack of historical precedent. And it's a little surprising to me to hear this perspective from Dr. Clapper, who's been a staunch advocate of a vegan lifestyle for decades. He now seems to suggest that following a strict plant-based diet might be dangerous, despite having recommended it to countless individuals since the 1980s. My wife and I even raised our three children on a vegan diet following Dr. Clapper's 1991 book, Pregnancy Children and the Vegan Diet. When did Dr. Clapper decide veganism was an experiment? If it's an experiment now, what was it 40 years ago? Was Dr. Clapper being irresponsible by promoting a lifestyle that hadn't been adequately tested? Now, Dr. Clapper next in his video mentions that plant-based neurologists, Dr. Dean and Ayesha Sherzai, that they recommend DHA supplementation and he respects their opinion. However, he doesn't elaborate on the evidence behind the Sherzai's recommendations. Now, as a side note, my daughters had the opportunity to meet the Sherzai's when they spoke at one of Rip Esselstyn's events several years ago, and the Sherzai's were also speakers at that event, and they were exceptionally kind to my daughters, which I greatly appreciated. So back in 2019, I reached out to the Sherzai's via email, requesting information on the studies that influenced their stance on omega-3 and brain health. They responded, promising to send me a list of relevant studies. Despite my following up a number of times over the next few months, I never received the promised list. But a friend of mine, a well-known vegan expert, shared with me a review article, or maybe it was a book promo, that was authored by the Shares Eye, and it was called Preventing Alzheimer's, Our Most Urgent Healthcare Priority. In a section where they discuss DHA and their reasons for recommending it, the Shares Eye cited just one study, this one from 10 years ago. I discussed this study in another video in the past, and I'll link that video below. But briefly, the study was so poorly designed that the editor of the journal that published the study, they also published an editorial about the study, uh, cautioning readers to view the conclusions of this study with a lot of skepticism. The editorial, which I will link below, states, Unfortunately, the confidence that can be placed in the study conclusions is severely limited by two important issues, one to do with the conduct and reporting of trials, and the other to do with assessment methods in trials on cognitive function. The omission of a pre-specified primary outcome in the trial by Stonehouse et al. is extremely unfortunate. It significantly reduces the confidence in the headline findings and clearly also means that the trial has not been reported according to consort guidelines. It's really troubling to see the many problems with the methodology of the study that the shares eyes relied on. Now, when Dr. Clapper endorses such research and many impressional vegans are listening, I think he's doing a disservice. And it seems that the shares eye are relying on pseudoscience at best to recommend DHA supplements to vegans here. Dr. Clapper also mentions that he respects the judgment of Dr. David Sinclair, who recommends DHA. However, Dr. Clapper does not mention that Dr. Sinclair recommends many other supplements in addition to DHA, including MNN, resveratrol, fistin, quercetin, spermidine, metformin, vitamin D3, vitamin K2, omega-3 fish oil, alpha lipoic acid, coenzyme Q10, aspirin, and a statin. In fact, Dr. Sinclair's recommendations actually extend beyond this list. There's several more. So I'd like to pose a question to Dr. Clapper. If you respect Dr. Sinclair's judgment, do you also take the other supplements on his list? 
Does Dr. Clapper, for example, take 800 milligrams of metformin every night and coenzyme, coenzyme Q10, spermidine, and a statin, and so on? Or is Dr. Clapper selectively endorsing only those recommendations from Dr. Sinclair that align with his own pre-existing beliefs or preferences and disregarding uh, the other recommendations that contradict them? A selective approach like that can create a biased and potentially misleading narrative for the vegan community, since it emphasizes only those aspects of Dr. Sinclair's expertise that support Dr. Clapper's argument. Dr. Clapper proceeds to discuss the 2016 Cora Age study and reads the conclusion section of the abstract, which states, but lower omega-3 levels were associated with a higher risk of cognitive impairment. Lower omega-3 index levels were associated with a higher risk of cognitive impairment. However, he doesn't mention how cognitive impairment was determined, perhaps because he didn't actually read the study. A few minutes later in the video, he refers back to the Cora Age study and then makes a factually incorrect statement. He says, Reflecting back on the Cora study, the folks with the lowest index had the highest risk of dementia. The folks with the lowest index had the highest risk of dementia. But this isn't quite accurate, Dr. Clapper. The Core Age study assessed participants' cognitive status using a standardized telephone questionnaire. A researcher phones participants and asks a series of questions and then calculates a score based on the responses. This is called the TIX-M questionnaire. The TIX-M questionnaire is a screening tool that can help determine the need for further testing, but it's not meant to be used on its own to identify people with mild cog cognitive impairment or to detect dementia, as Dr. Clapper incorrectly asserts here. Is Dr. Clapper basing his recommendation for vegans to take DHA on an old study that used a screening phone questionnaire and didn't actually assess the participants for dementia? As an experienced clinician, I think he should know the difference between a good study and a not so good study. In his video, Dr. Clapper then mentions the 2006 study. Um, I don't put a lot of stock into the plasma level test. But he says he doesn't put a lot of stock in the test that was used, so he disregards its finding. Next, he talks about the omega-3 index test, which measures the amount of DHA in red blood cells. And he explains why it's a better test than the one that measures blood levels of DHA. However, he then questions the test relevance, saying, But does the red, the omega-3 index measuring omega-3 fats in your red cell membrane really tell you what's going on in your brain? No, they don't. I will return to this point in just a moment, but back to the Cora Age study. To give vegans an idea about the quality of that study, you should understand that all of the dementia prevention guidelines published by specialty organizations composed of experts from all around the world all of these professional guidelines were published after the 2016 Cora Age study that Dr. Clapper is citing here to take DHA. So the WHO guidelines, they came out in 2019, the Lancet report came out in 2020, and the Alzheimer's Association guidelines were updated in 2022. And it's important to note that the Cora Age study was not deemed significant enough to get even a passing mention in any of these guidelines. Only Dr. Clapper finds it significant. Dr. Clapper then discusses how his own omega-3 index, his DHA blood level, has been decreasing over the last few years since he stopped taking a daily DHA supplement, and he expresses concern about that. Previously, Dr. Clapper said he had serious doubts about the usefulness of the omega-3 index test, calling the values inconsistent. So he said, This seems to be a technically difficult test to do because the results vary widely from laboratory to laboratory by a factor of three. Uh, a 2% at one lab might be a 6% at another lab. You know, it's hard to know what we're looking at. The uh, uh, the values just aren't consistent enough to make them useful to me. The values just aren't consistent enough to make them useful to me. So it would be interesting to learn what new research or change in the testing methodology made the omega-3 test useful to Dr. Clapper now. He certainly doesn't tell us this in his new video. Dr. Clapper, he notes that his omega-3 index report from Omega Quant indicates that his low levels put him at risk for heart disease. But the report does not mention any risk for dementia for Dr. Clapper based on his omega-3 index level. And that's because there's no evidence to support that claim. Or you can be sure that a testing company would be putting that risk in their report.
So Dr. Clapper is relying on a test that he once said he didn't trust to see if he's at risk for a condition that the test does not claim to assess your risk for. Okay, now I want to give you a real update on DHA supplementation. This September 2020 study was published in The Lancet. Unlike the Cora Age study, this was a placebo-controlled trial, which is an extremely high-quality study. In this study, researchers gave people DHA and then actually measured how much was getting to their brain. No study had ever looked at this before. So the researchers used spinal taps to check DHA levels in the brain. Study subjects underwent spinal taps after six months of ingesting over 2,000 milligrams daily of DHA to see how much actually got to their brain. You can see a spinal tap involves inserting a needle into the lower back between two vertebrae to collect a sample of cerebrospinal fluid, and this fluid surrounds the brain and the spinal cord. Participants in the DHA group had a modest but significant increase in brain DHA levels, and those who carry a gene called APOE4 had a much lower increase. The study authors concluded that doses of DHA of 1,000 milligrams daily or less are unlikely to reach the brain. So if you're following Dr. Clapper's advice on how much DHA to take, or you're taking Dr. Furman's DHA supplement, which has a total of 263 milligrams of omega-3 in it, you should understand that there's very little chance that your brain is seeing any of that DHA. Again, this 2020 study used a daily dose of 2,152 milligrams of supplemental DHA, which is over 800% more than the dose that Dr. Clapper and Dr. Furman recommend. This means that in order to reach the dosage used in the trial and have any DHA reach your brain, you would need to take more than eight servings per day of Dr. Furman's supplement, which, by the way, cost a mere $59 per one and a half ounce bottle. But the problem with that approach would be that Dr. Furman has already acknowledged that taking doses of 1,500 milligrams or more of DHA for just several weeks can be harmful. This is from Dr. Furman's webpage on DHA supplements. He wrote, These excessive doses can cause problems, as acknowledged by the Institute of Medicine. High doses of DHA and or EPA, 900 milligrams a day of EPA plus 600 milligrams a day DHA or more for several weeks, might reduce immune function due to suppression of inflammatory responses. Let me say this again. There is no evidence anywhere that taking the dose of DHA that Dr. Furman's supplement provides or the amount that Dr. Clapper is taking actually gets to your brain. You're paying $59 per 1.5 ounce bottle to make your omega-3 numbers look slightly higher on a blood test that Dr. Clapper previously described by saying, the values just aren't consistent enough to make them useful to me. Medscape, a medical information website for clinicians and scientists, did an article on the Spinal Tap DHA study, Failure of Omega-3s to Prevent Slow Alzheimer's Explained. They interviewed the lead author of the study who noted that it took very high levels of DHA to raise the DHA in the brain by just a small amount and that levels of DHA in your blood do not reflect what is happening in the brain. The great news is that there are proven interventions which you can adopt right now to prevent dementia, which all experts agree on, and they cost very little or no money. A lot of my viewers are already doing many of these things, but we all have areas in which we can improve. They include regular vigorous exercise, eating a healthy diet, treatment of obesity, high blood pressure and diabetes, preventing head injury, limiting alcohol use, avoiding cigarette smoke. Okay, that's it for today. To stay informed on actual research on DHA and to counter pseudoscience or quackery in the plant-based world, please consider subscribing to Reliable Sources. Thank you for watching today's video. Please give it a like and stay tuned for the next one.